Hi, cherished viewers and listeners out there. It's another beautiful Thursday, and it's time for the Leadership 360 Discourse from the studios of Metro TV here in Accra, Ghana, the west coast of Africa. It is that time where we deal or we throw out topics for us to deliberate on for the betterment of our society. I am your regular host, Dr. Victor Abbey. Let's take a quick message from our sponsors and our usual leadership pledge. Then we continue the conversation. Are you looking for an excellent professional risk management and training solutions provider? Look no further. Your ultimate solution provider is here at V5 Solutions Limited. We support you with our professional skills in building capacity of your teams and managing all your operational risks. Our best both solutions include private and corporate security risk management and training, fraud investigation, occupational safety and health management and training, project monitoring, evaluation and research, supply of private security, logistics equipment. Our solutions are professionally delivered with in-depth focus on people, processes and procedures the environment and ultra modern technology contact us now on 0303-957136 and 053-5176615 or send us an email at info at v5solutionslimited.com for a partnership that strengthens a company for an excellent sustainable productivity and profitability visit our website at www.v5solutionslimited.com for more details v5 solutions limited your ultimate professional risk management and training hub. on my Hannah to be a better leader every day, faithful and loyal to my country, organization and fellow team members, countrymen and women. I pledge myself to remain true to the core values of integrity and self-discipline through my daily choices and actions. My mind is alert, focused at all times. I shall show respect to everyone always and every time. I remain a better leader and team player always. So I pledge. Welcome back. We shall indeed continue to show respect always and every time to everyone. And we pledge continuously to do so. And we urge you to do the same as well. Let's see Go PLC. V5 Solution Limited and FV Global Consults. We are live from Metro TV Studios and live on Metro TV Ghana Facebook account and live on line as well. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about 2024 leadership trends. The topic for this afternoon is going to border on 2024 leadership trends. But before I continue, I open up the discussion. Let me quickly appreciate some four individuals, brethren who have been so supportive and who have been there to support this program. It's their birth anniversary, and I wish to celebrate them. They are in the person of David Ayi, Albert Biga, Isaac Wood, and Kwamina Coleman Petu. Your, you are amazing gentlemen, and our comradeship has been awesome. May the good Lord bless you and continue to grant you long life and prosperity. Happy and glorious birthday. Now, 2023 is gone. It has left in its wake a lot of challenges and opportunities as well. Its own challenges we were able to surmount, and we are into 2024. The question remains, what does 2024 
grow on our way. What are some of the trends that, as leaders, we need to be conscious of and tailor our leadership development, uh, skills development to adapt to those situations or the trends? That's what we're going to talk about in today's presentation or today's discourse. To set the ball rolling, all of us who agree that 2023 saw a lot of political and social upheavals. And that has continued or is going to be within this year as well. So political and social unrest is one of the trends that we'll be witnessing in 2024. A couple of these trends are critical that we need to pay special attention to them. And I have carefully selected seven of these trends for us to focus on. From all research, from all indications, or all predictions, these are the seven trends that leaders who are keen on developing their skills, leaders who are interested in developing the skills of their team members must focus on, even for the betterment of the organizations and countries at large. As I mentioned earlier, the social and political unrest, leadership skills of your team and yourself you must focus as well on the technology and data literacy. How do you utilize data? What data can be used to transform you know, strategies that you are implementing and so on and so forth. As well as the issue of diversity, equity, and inclusion is also access. These are things that whether we like it or not are real, are going to impact on our leadership skills or leadership de uh, skills development this year. So uh, leaders were, you know, worried. And domestically, you know, implications for personal development, we worried about all other things that will impact on their growth as individuals and as entities, communities, organizations. We need to monitor, we need to track the, the figures and, the, and, and just oppose it on our own pro projections and be able to come up with meaningful the volatility that is going to be experienced this year should be monitored, especially in the first quarter of this year, as has been predicted by the profession, is, is, is widening by day, and you cannot afford to be left behind. These trends will cause space, or the trend, or the leadership space within the 2024 era. We cannot, as leaders, stay back and think that the knowledge this is going to witness massive, you know, diversity at the workplace. And it has both, in fact, it has advantages for, 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 by way of policy. The policy must be equitable to all. The practices, position, appointments of your team members into various positions or injustice in every situation that they find themselves. A list of conflict within the diversity, equity, and inclusion space is also important for us to look at. Now, one of the trending issues, especially that guiding this development, the ESG concept, the ESG concept that the world is projecting, is championing. How are you utilizing that space to impact all things? Are you giving equal opportunity to the community workers or the community, uh, the inhabitants within the community you operate? What are you giving back to them? And so it will catch up with you if you are not compliant with, you know, some of these uh, regulations. Your shareholder compensation or democracy, how within, even within your workspace, how democratic are you? Within your team, how democratic are you? How are you giving opportunities to individuals to air their views? How are you getting them involved? How are you being transparent with the figures you churn out every day for your shareholders? How are you compensating yourself as executives of your business? Or how are you compensating yourself as political leaders? All these issues, people are monitoring and people are very conscious of it. And as leaders, if you are to succeed within 2024 you know, uh, era, you need to pay particular attention to ESG matters. Now, let's move quickly on to appreciate 
in the midst of all this, in the midst of the technological advancements that is around us, the social and political upheavals, the issue of ESG and diversity, equity, and inclusion issues. How are we also expected to think? Throughout the COVID period, since COVID-19, leaders have to adapt, and adaptability will continue to be the, 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 the feature, the key feature within the leadership space. So adaptive leadership will be what will shape the leadership space within the 2024 era, where leaders need to appreciate the fact that in the midst of volatility, political challenges that will be causing anxiety and you know, confusion around, there will be the need to develop personal emotional intelligence very well. Emotional intelligence education or developing personal emotional intelligence and that of the team members is very key to surmounting all these challenges within the 2024 leadership trend or challenges. And by that, we need to have ability to appreciate our own self, be self-aware who we are, what triggers our temper, what triggers our you know, temperament and all those things. What, how do we manage if we become aware of our you know, what triggers our anger or our disagreements with people? How do we manage? Could it be that we have a characteristic or a feature where we don't listen to people very well before we draw conclusion? It's an area you may want to work on and say, okay, now maybe I'm quick to judge. Let me take time, listen more to appreciate the perspective of the other person before, to appreciate what the person is going through, to empathize with the person so my reaction can be well informed. You can also build better relationship with your team members. By so doing, you'll be able to appreciate and understand what they are into, what they are going through at any point in time. And organizational justice as part of adaptive uh, leadership will also be key, where your, your, your structure, your culture within the space, decision fairness, whatever decision you make, must be fair to everybody. And you have to take into consideration the impact it will have on, for example, the ESG issues, uh, environment, social, and governance issues. Are you taking a decision based on personal ego or you are just, you know, being compliant with what the regulation says? And you must also, before you can be adaptive, you must embrace lifelong learning. This space that we find ourselves in within 2024 is not going to be static, it's not going to be rigid, it's going to continuously evolve. Remember we said on this show, we have said on this show that the environment that we have found ourselves in since 2020, uh, 2019 has been volatile, has been uncertain, has been complex, has been you know, ambiguous not easily comprehensible, is causing anxiety here and there. And so as leaders, we must appreciate the fact that, look, the space we're going to operate in within 2024 will not be any different. Now, the other one will be the fact that in the midst of technology and the challenges, the various challenges, there's the need for cost. Already we spoke about the impact of the global economy, how the global economy is going to look like as a result of these political upheavals and you know, business um, space as well. And this is going to impact on how you manage finances. And the finances here means that you can employ technology to do more work so as to ease the pressure on your facilities at work. So by that, you must also know that your workforce is going to be dispersed because of diversity. A lot of you, technology will provide that platform for you to connect with a lot of people across the globe. And so remote leadership, remote leadership will be another trend that we need to pay attention to. Remote leadership basically is about, you know, um, 
spelling out clearly the responsibilities of people without necessarily they being present within your own space and ensuring that you provide the right guidance remotely to support their, their work, their task undertaking. And by, by that, what it means that the 2024 is going to witness an ever-increasing, you know, uh, resorts to this kind of um, workspace where hybrid work, you know, systems will be employed to execute work. And by that, leaders would need to, you know, develop their remote leadership or virtual capabilities to be able to support their teams across board. You cannot be static or you cannot be stuck to the, you know, physical presence of your workers in this current environment. It will help you reduce even administrative costs because, and it will also contribute to the well-being of your staff as well. There are challenges as to how you manage your team members remotely, but the opportunities they are in for you when you read or you learn how to remotely monitor your, your workers, it will help a great deal. On this note, I think we, we, we have clearly spelled out what is going to inform the space we find ourselves in 2024. Let's take a quick breather, and when we are back, we will continue the conversation. Are you looking for an excellent professional risk management and training solutions provider? Look no further. Your ultimate solution provider is here at V5 Solutions Limited. We support you with our professional skills in building capacity of your teams and managing all your operational risks. Our best board solutions include private and corporate security risk management and training, fraud investigation, occupational safety and health management and training, project monitoring, evaluation and research, supply of private security, logistics equipment. Our solutions are professionally delivered with in-depth focus on people, processes and procedures the environment and ultra modern technology contact us now on 0303-957136 and 053-5176615 or send us an email at info at v5solutionslimited.com for a partnership that strengthens the company for an excellent sustainable productivity and profitability visit our website at www.v5solutionslimited.com for more details v5 solutions limited your ultimate professional risk management and training hub. Welcome back. Before the breather, we try to look at the trends within the 2024, what has been predicted to inform leadership development space within 2024, where we spoke about the social and political upheavals, we spoke about global economic volatility, we also spoke about diversity, equity, and inclusion, topped up by justice, and we also spoke about ESG issues, we also spoke about adaptive, adaptive leadership and remote leadership. And technology was key in our submissions as well before the breather. But before I continue, let me at this point open the full lines for your inputs as we deliberate on some of these trends further. So to reach out and be part of the, con the conversation, you can call 0531 982298 0531 as is on the screen. If you are out of the jurisdiction, just add plus 233 three and you'll reach us. You can equally send a WhatsApp and it shall be read on live on set. Now, as I was saying, all these trends are informing approach to leadership. Now, one key thing that stands tall in all this situation is leaders must have, you know, um, likeness or inclination to continuous learning. You must continuously 
monitor the space, to acquire new skills, especially when it comes to the technological space, where the generative artificial intelligence is key to doing business, to development, and every aspect of our lives. We have Mohamed Sadiq from Tamale on the line. Good afternoon, Mohamed. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope yeah, you are fine too. Your program is overloaded. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so we have to select some of them. And well, I will rely on my problem is on the on the uh, justice, social, and then uh, and governance. Actually, uh, not to cut you, we, this is just setting the tone. Subsequently, we're going to break these issues down, bring some other experts to our consultants to, you know, throw more light on some of this. This is just to a precursor to further discussion. So please go ahead. So I'm, I'm doing this because it's, uh, what is uh, on the leadership, justice and le uh, leadership. Uh, as of now, in the north, in the uh, in the five northern regions, plus the mm -hmm. uh, the four former brown Havre regions, they all have to travel to Umasi to to make up ten regions for any appeal case that you have. Whether you won your case in Tamil or Bolga or any place, or you won your case in Yendi. And they, 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 they appeal, you have to go to Kumasi. And as of now, you have to bear the cost of documentation. You have to bear the cost of you, the case, or the co case owners. You have to bear the cost of transportation and, uh, and, uh, and then accommodation for the, your lawyers, plus yourself, and so on. And because of this, many Many because of poverty, because of the poverty, many many of the clients, uh, the uh, the case owners had to abandon the, to forego their cases. And then I even, even and this and the reason being that the government they have closed down the regional the regional appeal courts because the government doesn't have uh, funds to, to to continue funding it. To individual case owners oh, who all right. do it, and it's a very serious case. And many people are so this uh, this uh, leadership and then justice that we okay. we spoke about. All right, the leadership and just and uh, leadership justice and governance. That is the one. As I know, it's affecting many clients in the in the the. All right, Mohammed. I guess your point has been made, and the stakeholders are listening, and I believe it's good information, and they will take the right actions. So, terrorist viewers will continue the discussion, and as I was saying, it calls for continuous monitoring and continuous learning. We as leaders and our teams must encourage ourselves to, to, to monitor constantly what is happening within the space. It is not only about what we have known and what we have done over the years. I have always said that experience is not about doing the same thing, same way, over several years that make you an experienced person. It is doing the same thing different ways based on the prevailing conditions or changes within space and time and getting results that are, you know, meaningful, that contribute to your expected outcome. That's what makes you an experienced person. So you can have a diversified view or perspective of doing things. Our continuous monitoring of the space is key to whether we will become adaptive leaders or even remote leaders will be, you know, uh, spelled out clearly to uh, ourselves and others. Now, I also spoke about data-driven, you know, literacy or data literacy as, you know, technology is advancing. Let's take, for example, as leaders, we want to develop our team members. Data analytics will tell us the skills uh, gaps that exist within our, our teams. By tracking and having 
and up to date data on our team members, we should be able to clearly determine what leadership skills gaps exist within our teams or even within our own or for our own selves and be able to, you know, focus on those things for the betterment of our own leadership drive. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Your name, please. My name is Mahmoud Abdul Moumen. I'm calling from Bali in the Savannah region. Mahmoud, from Bali, welcome to Leadership yeah. 360. Your points, please. Yes, my point is about um, the Court of Appeals. Okay, you as, as Mohammed raised. Hello? Yes, yes, okay. hello. Please go ahead. Yes, yes you realize that uh, in the Court of Appeals, most of the cases, most of our people are from the villages. And as they are from villages, it is difficult for them to move from their areas to such places. So I think if it is possible for government to reconsider by decentralizing some of these things, I think okay. that will also help our justice system. Okay. I think that will also help us as a people. Secondly, you, you, you also realize that in most cases, in our villages, people have good cases, but because of a lack of knowledge and lack of finance, most of their cases are not dealt with as it is expected. So we continue to do education more on some of these things. All right. Thank you very much. And that is one of our own contribution to awareness creation about what will be shaping leadership space within 2024. So you have re-emphasized the point uh, by Mohammed earlier, and I believe, once again, the stakeholders are listening and the right uh, actions will be taken. Now, when we use data, data can be used for a lot of things. Data informs strategy. Data inform um, training needs assessment. Um, you know, training needs and of your team members and the kind of training required by your key team members to drive your operational plan. And so that data will have to be generated using technology. And there is the need for you as you and I as leaders or to be able to embrace all these things and execute our agenda very well to the betterment of our society. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm fine. How are you too? I'm fine. Please, your point. Where are you calling from, by the way? Yeah, I'm Reverend Latif. I'm calling from Accra to be precise. Pokwase. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, my brother. I like the program you guys are doing. I just want to um, say that uh, the leadership thing that you people have brought is very good. You see, in Africa, we don't know the meaning of leadership. You see, we have different kinds of leadership. We have people who are born naturally a leader. And we have people to who learn how to become a leader. I think uh, leadership should be incorporated in our various schools so that people will learn how to become a leader. So that all these things that we are facing in our country, it will be a thing of the past. There are a lot of things that the youth must know about leadership, the qualities of a leader, who is a leader. All these things, the youth don't know what a leader is. So, I mean, look at our, our political space. We have a leadership crisis. There are a lot of people just, I mean, getting positions which they have nothing about, they know nothing about. So that is what I want to say. So that whilst you guys are teaching about leadership and other stuff, it should also be incorporated in our schools, our various schools. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Latif. Well, points well made and well articulated. It dovetails into our purpose for our objective on this program is to create that awareness about leadership for all of us to appreciate the contribution leadership can make to the development of our society 
and the continent at large. And so your recommendation is well noted. It is our fervent prayer that the stakeholders, the regulators will take notes. And I believe to a large extent, some work is ongoing. We can make it better. It can be done better so that at the tender age, our, our colleagues, our brothers and sisters will be able to you know, embrace leadership, the right leadership qualities before they rise to the higher height. Good afternoon, Francis, from Rojasi. Good afternoon, Aiza. You are welcome to Leadership Tricity. And your point, please. Hello? Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. You are welcome to Leadership Tricity. Your point. Yeah, in fact, I really enjoyed the program. And I just want to add a little to what has been expanded earlier. Please go ahead. Yeah, what I'm saying is that our country in nature has a problem with leadership. So I believe that um, I've gone to all the basic level of education, but there's a little of leadership when it comes to our curriculum. Absolutely nothing with that. You go to a course, you have a lecture, and then, in fact, you come out and when it talks about leadership, when they give you a portfolio for you to manage because of this, I mean, uh, basic ethics that we are not being taught. We have problem with it. So I believe that our curriculum must, it should be even a whole course that people should even go and study or a faculty of leadership that people are trained because, look, where we, the country is heading to, I believe that if we have a strong leadership foundation, we will not be where we are. So I believe that, say, I really appreciate fact, what you are doing. I've, I've learned a lot. So I believe going forward, I have no option than to just be a follower of this program. And I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And continue to be our ambassador. Spread the news. Tell a friend to tell a friend that Leadership 360 comes on live on, every, on Thursdays on Metro TV. And you can get live viewers, viewing on Facebook as well. This is a program meant for you and I to, to learn, as we say, or learn and relearn to accelerate our, the development of our leadership skills. Thank you very much. Let's continue briefly, and then I will run up the show. Just as another point, and then I will wrap it up. Now, we have to also cultivate a culture of feedback. That borders on communication largely. What kind of communication are you able to communicate with your, or are you, commun are you able to relate or relate to your, your team members? There must be transparency. There must be openness in your communication. There must be, you know, timely communication of events and issues as well. There's no need under the circumstance to hoard information because information is key to the success of your team. The leadership trends within 2024 will require that our communication is effective and we must embrace all we can, all platforms, all media, or all medium to be able to reach out to our teams so as to better the lot of our teams. Now, on this program, we have an honor code that is so dear to us, and we believe, as the, some of the callers said, leadership is key to everything. So we say, let's all subscribe to an honor code that will propel us to higher heights. Let's take a listen and a read of our leadership and our code. I am a proud and firm African. I will take a stand. I will lead and be the change. Come and take my hand. For the safety, HANA, and welfare of my country and company come first. Always and every time. The HANA, welfare, and comfort of the people I lead come next. My own ease, comfort, and safety come last. Always and every time.
Welcome back. All too soon, our time is up. But to wrap up the show, I will say that in the current year, 2024, the way forward for us as leaders to be able to be effective in our leadership drive and our leadership skill development drive, we need to embrace adaptive leadership where we need to monitor the space and the changes occurring around us to be able to you know, embrace um, or to appreciate what it is and adapt the right uh, approach to it. We need to also empower our team members. Economic empowerment is key to survival within the 2024 space. Purpose-driven and remote leadership skills. Clearly spelled out, you know, agenda is key to we getting around some of the challenges. Appreciating the opportunities they are in and embracing technology and data literacy as well as effective communication, constructive feedback, coaching, and mentoring. We need to coach our teams. We need to mentor the younger ones. We need to mentor our team members to success. It's the end of the show. I appreciate all of you who contributed to it and who have watched as well and listened. Next week, we shall continue the conversation. This is a pace setter for our subsequent communication on or discourse on the leadership trend within 2024. I hope to see you next week. Bye.